Python 3.12 was just released and it comes with a whole bunch of new features and capabilities, performance improvements, enhancements such as error, improved error messaging, and something called immortal objects. Some of the performance improvements that we see include various libraries and improvements. One of them is async IO. They saw a significant improvement. They say benchmarks are showing 75% speed up. However, diving in further with the async IO library, performance improvements we see some things as some use cases see dramatic performance improvements two to five times faster. We see this is an improvement to the event loop here where it says uh, eager task execution. What does that mean? Okay, here we go with eager task execution. It takes the event loop and allows anything that comes in through the interrupt to execute immediately. It says this will provide a performance improvement, uh, but the drawback is that yeah, application tasks may execute out of order. Order. That's fine for most situations. Take the performance win. Actually, what this does is gets me kind of excited to jump back into some of the kernel libraries that are available in Linux for event loops like with ePoll and those kinds of things. Being able to work directly with those APIs provides a dramatic performance improvement. And this is something that you don't usually get directly access to when you're using something like Python. There are a couple of additions to the command line interface capability of Python, including SQLite 3 and the UUID module. Kind of neat, check it out. We take a look. What does that mean? What does that look like? Uh, you do Python dash M and the library name, and then you can do all sorts of fun things directly right there from a command line without having to write a bunch of Python code straight up. All right, let's look at the new per interpreter GIL, global interpreter lock. This is kind of interesting. Basically, it looks like it allows you to run multiple interpreters through some sort of API mechanism. It's not very clear what's going on here. Maybe it's an internal only kind of thing, but it allows you to take advantage of all the CPU power on the system that it offers. Ah, okay, so it does say it's only available in the C API, so that's mostly unavailable to most engineers from a Python perspective, and they're gonna expose it in a later release. All right. Really, I mean, just use multi-processing. It's basically the same thing. You might be a little bit more memory because every instance has to be its own uh, process ID in the in the kernel. All right, what are these immortal objects? I'm super curious. It's such a powerful name. It makes me think that it's going to be meaningful. Immortal objects. Here we go. All right, this allows you to bypass reference counts and it's uh, to the CAP. Okay, so this is probably not available to most users. Okay, it looks like that just means that it doesn't get freed. So it allows you to create like static. This is weird. I mean, isn't that a thing that would already be uh, available? Okay, we see here that the immortal object is an internal only feature and no changes to the public API. So basically for us normal users, it sounds like it's a cool name that's included in there, but we can't do anything with it. There's nothing we can do, but it's cool that we have it now. One little neat bonus for AI and machine learning users in Python, we see that we have a batched item for the iterators, which allows us to collect even sized tuples because usually today with uh, Python, when you're training a model, you need to batch things to uh, send to the GPU. If you don't send large batches, then you're just wasting a lot of time for the IO wait in between the CPU memory and the GPU memory. So it's better to batch things. So it'll throw it over to the GPU. GPU processes it, returns the result back to the CPU. Normally you have to write that code yourself, but it looks like now we have the ability to just call some sort of batched capability here. Oh, here we go, look at that. Oh, they make that really easy. Oh, that is fantastic. Just a simple batched API call and how many you want in the batch. In general, this is what makes Python a great language to work with because it has all of these nice pre-built in functions that make our lives easier for all the common tasks that we have to deal with. We have another nice bonus here of improved error messages. This, uh, when something when you did something wrong which I, I do often I, I make mistakes here and there it will give you these really aggressive errors saying you did it wrong it's terrible I can't believe you did that now it actually will help you and say did you forget to do the thing that might be the thing that you needed to do I mean it's pretty basic however these kinds of things are really nice for helping adopt language when you're getting started in a new language and you make these mistakes I make these mistakes really easily having something to help you 
along the way, even if it's something like as minor as this, is really meaningful. <laughs> yeah, these, uh, these helpful error messages are kind of silly. This, black is not defined. Did you mean to define it? <laughs> And we also see a nice improvement to f strings, which allows you to create a string and then put some arbitrary code in the middle to, that will evaluate eventually into a string output, which is really nice because often that's the case where you need to concatenate a lot of things together, do a little bit of work, do a little bit of variables, have variable scope appear. And it's really nice just to just plop it into a uh, formatter. This is very similar to JavaScript template literals with the back ticks. Looking here, I see that they made a reasonable improvement where you would be not be able to mix quote marks. This is really weird that they didn't allow you to do that in the first place, but it looks like now you can mix various quote types, triple quote, single quote, and a double quote. Also, it looks like they let you nest all sorts of varieties of quotes. This is kind of neat, but don't do that. Don't, don't do it. This, would, this is terrible. It's neat that you can do it, but it makes things very difficult to understand. Uh, it's a good demonstration of how they've improved the, the f-string functionality and capability. No way, you can use multiple lines. Oh, that is very satisfying. You can even put in comments. Okay, this makes f-strings remarkably powerful. I really like this. All right, we saw a lot of upgrades and improvements with 3.12. Performance improvements is a good one. I would make sense to in immediately install 3.12 with your Python workloads. Python isn't known for its CPU efficiency, so it makes sense to grab as much of that efficiency as you can as early as possible. We also found that some of the things that sounded exciting, such as the global interpreter lock with the uh, internal process, also with the immortal objects, which sounds really cool, but we can't really do a whole lot with these things right now. So that we'll look forward to the future with how the next version of Python takes advantage of the technologies that they built.